Yeah, well, I said yesterday, pe people around the league believe that he's going to end up a Houston Rocket. The, the, the issue with Carmelo and Mike D'Antoni was he was never a Mike D'Antoni kind of player. When he went from Denver to the Knicks, he was about bully ball, isolation, 18 feet away, face up, jab, jab, dribble, all of that. That's not Mike D'Antoni. But I think now... I, I think people might be surprised. When you think about D'Antoni and the type of players and scores that he had... They when think you, it's all offense, no defense. Yeah. So Melo would be perfect. But the way Melo scores... It's, as not an efficient three-point shooter. Now, last year he and, made 169. And ball stopper. Ball stopper. Ball stopper. That, that won't work. Mm. And at 34 years old, in the twilight of his career, now he can sit down with Chris Paul, who you know I've said is advocating for him to be there. And Chris Paul can say, Melo, this is what we need. You're a microwave. You come off the bench. You play a role spread the floor, but you cannot be pounding the ball into the pavement like you did in Denver and with the Knicks to an even more degree. So I, to me, with Mike D'Antoni, he's not a guy that holds grudges. He's a guy that was ahead of his time. When he shepherded in this new mm. system, that was way ahead of his time. Carmelo was not committed to that style of basketball, but now I think he can be. I think that given what's happened with Trevor Ariza going to the Suns, yesterday's development, our boy, Luke Richard, Bob Mute, decides to go to the Clippers. Yeah, Nick, I got it right. You got it. Yeah, as soon as he gets traded. As soon as he gets traded, we'll Prince. never talk yeah. about Cameron again. Cameron Prince. Right. Cameron Prince. Prince. Right. Thank you. There you go. That's a law. Absolutely. Now, the space that's available in the lineup for Melo, to me, it's more advantageous for him to go there now compared to looking at the wing players they had. My biggest problem is going to be the buy-in defensively because that's what I saw from these other players. I saw their stars. Chris Paul, Harden, um, Ariza, all these guys sacrifice everything, offense, but more on the defensive yeah. end. And they played, if you can be a Houston team that play defense on a rope, they played on a rope as much as they have. I've seen that collection of players I, play I on a rope. I agree with you, but I credit three guys primarily for that. Capella? I think if you have Capella, P.J. Tucker, and Chris Paul playing big minutes, you're going to have a good defense. Chris Paul, even at this age, one of the best. But if you don't guys. have the buy-in switching, especially right. in the no. Western Conference, yes. that's the problem. You're dead. Agreed. Yeah. You have to – the guys have to buy into it. I agree with that. But they don't have to be naturally gifted defenders. Eric Gordon ain't no great defender, no. but he bought in. So you're right that Melo has to buy into it. But I think we have we, – sometimes guys go from way uh, – they're so underrated, they become overrated. Yeah. And sometimes the opposite happens. Melo, his last couple years in New York – was an overrated basketball player. I remember yeah. the, the, that NBA rank thing came yeah. out, and Melo was, I don't know, I think he was like 27th. And people were, oh, are you kidding me? And that was about right. He had, yeah. And so he, at one point, he was overrated. And now I think we've swung too far in the other direction. Because I'm going to bring up another guy that could go to any team this offseason, and we'll go to some, and he'll be signed for around the money that Melo's going to end up signing for, off the bench scorer, and no one's going to say one bad word about him. Jamal Crawford. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. Jamal yes. Crawford, yeah. by the way, last year shot the same percentage yeah. from the field as Melo, shot a worse percentage from three, ain't no defender. And Jamal Crawford, because he is properly rated yeah. and you know what you're getting with him, you'd be like, oh, he could be but a good bench Jamal option. Jamal Crawford knows where he's rated. Yes, I that's think the, the difference. problem is, is Carmelo yeah. doesn't see yeah. himself the way the rest of the league sees him. And, and he doesn't guard anybody. I mean, we talked about it yesterday. That's why he couldn't play in the playoffs. Forget the fact that he goes 0 for 9 in Game 7 versus Utah. He couldn't guard anybody. And so I, my thing with the Rockets last year was the first time under D'Antoni, and really for the, for, for the Rockets, they go top 10 defensive efficiency. That was a mm -hmm. big difference yes. and a big boost for them. If Carmelo goes there and he's not willing to guard anybody – what are we talking about? He can't be on the floor. Well, Liz, I, I, I guess maybe I, I think people evolve, and even if they don't go through some cataclysmic change, I think sometimes drastic life events can help you take a step back. Mello being waived for the first time yeah. in his basketball life. Mello seeing a... Oh, wait, 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 yeah. They gave him $28 million to go home. Yeah. Well, they're about he, to, yeah. He wasn't waived, bro. Well, that, that, they're, they're, that's, they're paying him to leave. Right, but that's what I'm saying. That's what being waived is, right? Where there's like, No, no, being waived is you ain't getting paid. Well, that's, like, the, that's, that's a setback. That's the, okay, sure. Yeah, that, you you know out, what I'm saying? Bought out. Bought, well, I don't know if he's going to buy out, out trades, or waived, yeah. but regardless, the point is, they are. that's more to my point. We would rather, and a lot of this has to do with luxury tax, we we're, have to pay you this money no matter what. We're better off without you than with you is what Mello is going to be receiving. Also, he's going to be, for the first time in his basketball career, being 
teamed with a guy that he, I don't want to say looks up to, but that he looks even yeah. eye to eye with and that he has such respect for in Chris Paul if he does go to Houston. And he is, for the first time, I believe, staring at his basketball mortality. He knows that if wherever I go next it doesn't work, I'm done. Yeah. And so if that doesn't make you go through some type of adjustment, then nothing will. Now, you're, you're hesitant about if he can adjust. Like, if, if a guy can go through that type of What change. was last summer, Nick? Last summer was – see, last summer – Last summer, he, he should have had, he should had the same attitude yeah. that, that you're talking about right yeah. now. No, 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 because last summer it wasn't an insult. Last summer was an exciting moment for him. Oh, I'm going to a contender. I am a part of a big three. Yeah. Last summer, people were talking about the Thunder as if they could be fringe yeah. Western Conference contenders. He can trick himself to think the same thing now. He's really on a contender now. OKC was not it, a contender. I mean, they're a Chris Paul potentially hamstring away from winning a championship. Mm -hmm. And so Carmelo – if he were to come here, he has to not only accept but embrace that role because that's the only way this thing can work. And that going back to yesterday's point about Team USA Mellow, that's the only Mellow that works with Houston. Catch and shoot threes, don't put the ball on the deck, and certainly cannot play volleyball. Listen, last year, yeah, there was a ton of excitement but, but in, in, in Oklahoma City. Yeah. There was with the three of them. But three quarters of the way through the season when it wasn't working and they were like, okay, Melo might have to come off the bench, he didn't want to do that. Remember, we kept yeah. talking about it. He was disgruntled. Right. He didn't like his playing time being reduced. He didn't want to do it when it was for the betterment of the team. So now you're going to a situation I, Jenna, where you're going to have to For whatever it's worth, I don't think that's accurate. I don't think they ever floated – taking him off the bench during the season. It was floated at a press conference by a reporter, by a reporter yeah. before Early, the season. Right. Yes. And he yes. dismissed it. I don't think they ever went And to based him. on them having the roster that they had, it didn't make sense. You go to a stock team, then you ask the veteran that question. Yeah, he probably would have given you a different answer, but I can't look at their roster and them not have a better small forward than me and say, you know something? I think I should be a bench player. No, that would be ridiculous. But... I would be more comfortable if a reason was still there oh, and yeah. he was coming to Houston as a bench player because I believe he's a liability if he is a starter. Here, here's the last point I'll make on this. I really, and you guys know this, I really trust the Rockets' brain. Yes. Daryl Morey and those people. I also think I really trust Chris Paul. I do not think they are, they would, they're not desperate. No. I do not think they will sign Carmelo Anthony unless they have had all these discussions, unless they are in full agreement on everything about it. Oklahoma City last year was desperate. Oklahoma City thought, man, if we don't, we, we, we've got Russ, we've got, to, we've got to try to contend as much as possible. Now that we've got Paul George, let's see what we can do. And they bring in Melo and it doesn't work out. I just, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it'll turn out that Melo's done. That mellow, the, the, that year 14 was his last productive yeah. year. But I don't think that'll be the case. I'm going to go on record as this. If Chris Paul, in his conversation, talking to Carmelo Anthony, makes him play some defense, it'll be the first time in NBA history that your buddy talked you into playing some D. That's, because that's I have true. never yeah. seen it happen. And they lose in Bob Mute and Ariza, two of their best defenders, most versatile defenders. But, I, but here's this with Carmelo. Chris Paul and Harden, they were able to come together and – and embrace the fact that they wouldn't always have the ball. Specifically, Paul, playing off the ball to a degree, letting mm -hmm. Harden work. Carmelo's never done that. So, again, it's something he'd really have to do differently, and I, I don't know if he's there yet.